Dan Andrews is, is very keen for Victoria to be the first to have an offshore wind farm, isn't he? Is that right? Well, I believe so. Uh, but again, the issue here is that this is not going to resolve the issue. We have in this country an abundance of oil, an abundance of gas, an abundance of coal, uh, an abundance of uranium, but we're not allowed to use it because politicians say we can't. Uh, it's quite as simple as removing net zero, cutting red tape, repealing the ban on nuclear power. That's how we get reliable and affordable energy generation, not by building these you know, wind farms offshore, which are untested and experimental on a mass level. It, we're heading for a disaster. And uh, to be honest, we need to make sure that there's uh, clarity in the debate on this. Well, Daniel, what you're saying makes perfect sense. When are we going to hear arguments like that from the coalition in Victoria? Well, it's a good question. And the coalition in Victoria has gone further than Labor at the federal level in terms of their commitment to cut emissions by 50% by the year 2030, which compares to 43% by Labor at the federal level. So, look, I don't know what's driving this. They might think that there's votes to be won in the inner cities, and look, perhaps there is, but they need to have their eye on the long-term future of the state. Don't forget, Victoria was once one of the great industrial and manufacturing powerhouses, not only of Australia, but around the world, in large part because of the brown coal that is here. You know, it runs 24-7, it's reliable, it's affordable, and that is how you have a manufacturing sector that employs tens of thousands of people. There's no vision for the future of the state. There's no vision for how can Victoria and Australia, for that matter, once again become a great industrial and manufacturing um, powerhouse. Instead, there's a narrow focus on a small number of well-off inner city voters who, to be honest, don't share mainstream Australian values anyway. And didn't suffer during the lockdowns. Now, before I before before you go, Dan, I just want to switch over to the US. Uh, finally, the midterm elections in the United States on Tuesday are going to they're going to be closely watched even here in Australia, I think, because they're so crucial. Now, they will surely be a gauge on how much Americans have learned to dislike their corrupt and doddery old president. But that president being Joe Biden, Joe Biden delivered a speech in Washington yesterday warning people to be patient, warning American voters to be patient, because the votes might take days to count. Now, Daniel, you don't have to have seen, the, uh, seen him deliver this speech to hear alarm bells ringing. Do you think the fix is already in? Well, I'm not sure the fix is in uh, quite yet, but it's concerning when you have the president saying, you know, we're not going to know the results of the election on the night. And we saw all the issues in the last election with the mail-in ballots and everything that was happening there. So, look, I mean, American democracy has always been very messy, but it feels like it's messier now than it's ever been. But you're completely right. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. My, uh, what I'm going to be most interested in is to see if Blake Masters can get up in Arizona as the senator there. Uh, because that's going to be a real indication of how strong the Trump momentum is. You know, if someone like Blake Masters can get up from being very far behind in the polls only a few weeks ago, it's now getting close to being tied, that would suggest that there's a lot of momentum for Trump. And then if he gets a lot of his MAGA people up in Congress and Senate, then, you know, the odds are that he'll run again. And, um, you know, that'll be, if nothing else, very entertaining.